Alright, chapter 2. Nehemiah sent to Judah. In the month of Nisan, in the twentieth year of King Artaxerxes, when wine was before him, I took up the wine and gave it to the king. Now I, now I had not been sad in his presence. And the king said to me, Why is your face sad, seeing you are not sick? This is nothing but sadness to the heart. Then I was very much afraid, I said to the king. Let the king live forever. Why should, my, why should not my face be sad when the sea, the place of my father's graves, lies in ruins, and his gates have been destroyed by fire? Then the king said to me, What are you, are you requesting? I, so I prayed to the God of heaven, and I said to the king, If it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor in your sight, that you send me to Judah, to the city of my father's graves, that I may rebuild it. And the king said to me, The queen sitting beside him, How long will you be gone, and when will you return? So it pleased the king to send me, when I had given him a time. And I said to the king, If it pleases the king, let letters be given me to the governors of the province beyond the river or Israel, that they may be that they may let me pass through until I come to Judah. And and a letter to Asa, the keeper of the king's forest, that he may give me timber to make beams for the gates of the fortress of the temple, and for the wall of the city, and for the house that I shall a copy. And the king granted me what I asked, for the good hand of my God was upon me. So it's always good to have you know, to be on God's side, or to have God on your side. Nehemiah inspects Jerusalem's walls. And I came to the governors of the province beyond the river and gave them the king's letters. So now, now the king has sent with me officers of the army and horsemen, but when Symbolic the Hor the Hornonite and Tobiah the Ammonite servant heard this, it displeased them greatly that someone had come to seek the welfare of the people of Israel. So I went to Jerusalem and was there three days. And then I rose in the night, I and a few men with me, and I told no one what my God had put into my heart to do for Jerusalem. There was no animal with me but the one on which I rode. I went out by, I went out by night by the valley gate to the dragon spring and to the dome gate, and I sped to the walls of Jerusalem that were broken down and its gates that had been destroyed by fire. Then I went on to the fountain gate to the king's pool, but there was no room for the animal that was under me to pass. Then I went up in the night by the valley and inspected the wall. I turned back and, and entered by the valley gate and, and so returned. And the officials did not know where I had gone or what I was doing, and, and, and uh, I had not yet told the Jews, the priests, the nobles, the, officers, the officials, and the rest who were to do the work. Then I said to them, You see the trouble... The trouble we are in, how Jerusalem lies in ruins with, with its gates burned. Come, let us build the wall of Jerusalem, that we may no longer suffer derision. And I told them of the hand of my God that had been upon me for good, and also of the words that the king had spoken to me. And they said, Let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for the good work. But when Sambalat the Horonite and Tobiah the Ammonite servant and Geshem the Arab heard of it, they jeered at us. And despised us, he said, What is this thing that you are doing? Are you rebelling against the king? Then I replied to them, The God of heaven will make us prosper, and we, his servants, will arise and build, but you have no portion or right or claim in Jerusalem. So Nehemiah, is told, Nehemiah totally just told this guy off. He was like, and, you know, These guys, one was a Horonite, the other one was an Ammonite from Jordan, the other, other one was an Arab from Saudi Arabia. And they came to Nehemiah and they're like, Why are you, why are you, you know, rebuilding? This place, you know, it's it's, it's just it's destroyed. And Nehemiah's like, look, if you gonna help us, then just get the heck away from here. Pretty much, it's what, he, it's what he said. Pretty much, if you don't put it in today's terms, and um, and so you know, Nehemiah's like, you know, if you're not gonna help us, you're not, in, you know, don't don't be here. Don't don't help us. You know, get away. So you know, because Nehemiah was doing what God put on his heart, and nobody, I mean, nobody was gonna stop him because he was a godly man that was out for God's own heart, like David was. So it's chapter two. Grow up chapter three, um, here in a minute.